is being implemented there. So to start with, first we'll start looking into what exactly the driver is. So we know about these drivers are softwares, they are not hardware. They are basically a piece of software which will communicate with hardware. Now, this driver should be in kernel space. Drivers cannot be in user space. Driver simply defined is a piece of code which is completely specific to hardware. A piece of software which is specific to the hardware device, which basically brings all the functionality of the hardware to the applications. Without a driver, an application cannot make use of the hardware functionalities. That's what a driver is. A driver has to be in the kernel space in the case of monolithic kernels. In the case of microkernels, we have an option of putting this driver as part of middleware space. But basically, driver should reside in the privileged environment. The reason is only in the privileged mode, it's possible to execute instructions to read and write on the device registers. From the, the ring 3, which is the user space, we cannot read and write to that particular area called device registers. IMO is not possible, because most of the IMO instructions are specific to privilege level 0. Okay, So drivers should reside as part of kernel space. And applications in the user space will have to go through the driver code to access the hardware functionalities, which means drivers are services used by the applications to access hardware functionalities. This is the definition for a device driver in OS environment. Normally a driver is a piece of code which is specific to hardware. Right? This kind of code you can write in microcontrollers where there is no OS directly as part of application. Wherever we have an operating system and protected mode stuff, driver resides in the kernel mode or privileged mode. Applications reside in non-privileged area. Applications have to go through drivers to access the hardware. Applications are not allowed directly to access hardware because they reside in non-privileged area or ring 3 in case of Intel. Right? So that's the basic overview. So in Linux, as far as Linux is concerned, the drivers are kernel services used by the applications to access hardware functionalities. We'll look into drivers of both types, the embedded, uh, how we build drivers, normally PC setup, how we build drivers, the server setup, how we build drivers, and all that. But to start with, we'll start with PC as an example, so that all of you can relate easily. And slowly we'll look into embedded and the issues of embedded differences and all that. How are these devices connected? Is application interested in the, okay, let's go with this first. What kind of devices we use? Peripheral devices, input devices like mouse, keyboard, and all that stuff. We also have printer kind of devices. Then we have various other kinds of devices like VGA, that is graphics console, networking device to send and receive network packets and all that. So we have the so-called devices, which we also refer to as peripherals. This is first part. Right? <clears throat> Different types of them. How are these devices connected? In a PC case, how is your heart is connected to processor? Through what? Through a bus. Sorry, through a bunch of some interface lines, isn't it? Where is this bus, the bus connected to on the other end? Did I need to see you? No. To controllers, isn't it? What the controllers are? Are they devices again? Yes. yes. But they are not end functionality devices. They are a kind of bridge devices. Isn't it? So we have a bus which we refer to as a peripheral bus. And this peripheral bus on the other side, of the host side, host is your main port. You have a controller. called device IO controller. This is second entity. This device IO controller, UART controller, USB controller, in the case of USB, in the case of other types, VGA controller, network controller, and so on. So we have controllers connected to devices which provide the functionality which the applications are interested in. Applications are not interested in 
controls. And then this particular controller is connected again with a bus in case of desktop and server architectures. In case of embedded, this particular bus will not be there. In case of this, we have a pseudo bus or some kind of flow logic through which this is connected to the processor or the controller. So in case of PC setup, in place of this, you have, sorry, here you have the processor. Okay, so this is called the controller bus. This is called the peripheral bus. So two types of buses exist. On PC server platform, we have bus called PCI, which will do this job only. It cannot do this job. USB is an example of this type. It cannot be used here. Okay, USB is a peripheral bus. USB is not a controller bus. So this is how we have the hardware connector. So when you are writing driver now, look at this hardware connectivity and tell me how many drivers you need. What kind of logic we need to write in driver if you have to take out functionality from this. Let's make an assumption this is USB stick. We want to store data and read data from here. You are writing a code to store data here, to read data from here. What kind of issues you need to consider to write that code? What kind of issues you need to consider? Where is your driver running? Where is your code running? In this hardware setup, your code runs where? On the processor, which means you are executing something here. You are executing that code here. Know the place first where you are running, then it will become easy. If you are executing here some instructions, and you want to have read-write functionality on this device, what kind of issues you need to take care of while writing that instruction? Can you directly reach this? No. You have to reach first controller, which means you need to know how to speak to controller. You need to give commands to controller. Controller then will, on behalf of your code, on behalf of the processor, controller then will do the job of. So first step, you should know how to talk to controller and how to send data, how to send control commands to it, how to read data from it, all that. And then you should know what kind of functionalities this device offers. Because you cannot tell controller to carry out an operation which this device does not support. Yes, so you should know about the device operations. You should know about what are the commands or what are the various kinds of uh, options provided by the device and then communicate with the controller and tell the controller, please carry out this operation with this parameter and this status code. Got it? Which means the driver logic will include communication with controller, also communication with the end device on which you want the functionality to be executed. So driver developer should be aware of the hardware topology. Otherwise, you may end up writing code specific to this. It will not work. That code has to go through this bridge. All right? Which means this driver is now of two parts. You can break that code logically. Logically, you can break it up to two parts. One, first one, interfacing with Second one, code specific to peripheral device functionality. This is very important. What will this device do? and what kind of operations it supports, you must know as a driver developer and tell, tell the controller to carry out that operation. Controller cannot do things automatically, you need to instruct it. In case of USB, it's more smarter job because this can be any device, this is always same. Is it a USB stick, USB mouse, or USB X device, Y device? USB controller is same, which means this code will allow you to interact with the controller 
But without knowing your device to which you are talking, you cannot write this code.